All right, so we previously saw this result, right? That if we do a hypothesis testing for a single mean, right? Um, okay, so if you're doing a hypothesis testing for a single mean, remember your null hypothesis basically would always take this form here, right? That the mu here is equal to some constant value, and that constant value we denote as mu zero here, right? Okay, so this is your null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, depending on um, what your problem is asking for, right? Your, your alternative hypothesis, H1, would take one of these forms here, right? Now, this result here is for if you have uh, a random sample from, if you're dealing with a normal population with known variance, right? Okay, so in the case of... Um, uh, normal population with known variance, right? Um, right? So in the case of normal population with known variance, the your critical region depends on um, the form of your alternative hypothesis, right? Um, okay, so if your alternative hypothesis is of this form, right, that mu is bigger than constant mu zero here, right? then your critical region would be Z um, bigger than or equal to Z alpha, right? Okay, and likewise, if the alternative hypothesis is mu less than mu zero, right, then this would be your form of your critical region, Z uh, less than minus Z alpha, right? And if you have mu not equal to mu zero, then what you're going to have is you're going to have a, a, a two-sided um, critical region, right? Z less than uh, minus Z alpha, together with Z bigger than uh, Z alpha here, right? Okay, but uh, the point I want to make is uh, your critical region over here, it depends on two things, right? Your critical region depends on, well, your form of your alternative hypothesis, and it also depends on um, the the situation for the problem, right? Uh, in particular, whether it's a normal population or not, right? Uh, or if you know the variance or if you do not know the variance, right? Okay, so in this situation over here, when it's a normal population with known variance, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a critical region of this sort of form, right? Uh, where what you'd be doing is you'd be using Z alphas, right? Okay, and then also for this setup over here where you have a normal population with um, known variance sigma squared, right? The form of your test statistic would be um, a scaled X bar, right? Uh, so in other words, X bar, the big X bar minus mu divided by sigma on root 10, where um, sigma is the standard deviation for your problem, right? And this is known standard deviation. So for this sort of problem, it will be given to you, right? Okay, so this is, we saw this already, right? Um, but now let's look at um, some variations on this situation. And these variations here are nothing really new because these are the same variations that we use when we were looking at um, confidence intervals, right? Okay, so this, and I stated this more generally, so case one over here is really just this first case uh, that we just talked about, right? So normal population with known variance sigma squared um, and uh, any sample size, right? Okay, case two now is when you um, you don't know the distribution, right? Um, you have a known variance and um, it's a large sample size, right? So in this case over here, basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be invoking central limit theorem, right? Um, but you probably wouldn't see that really for our purposes, at least for the hypothesis testing, you could really just use a formula that's going to be specified over here, but um, where the formula comes from is the fact that you're using central limit theorem for part two, right? Okay, so you, we want to realize that um, part two, the, the conditions over here or the hypotheses, well, the conditions for your problem, right? Um, it's different, right? Here, for part one, you have uh, a normal population, and for part two, you don't know that you have a normal population, right? Um, both cases, you know the variance, right? But in case one, um, you uh, it could be any sample size. And for case two, right, what you need is a large sample size. And by large, we mean uh, n bigger than or equal to 30, right? All right, so case three now, um, it's you could think of these cases as being variations on, say, case one, right? So now what we have is we have a normal population now, right? Um, but we don't know the variance, right? Um, and the sample size is small, right? The sample size is less than 30. 
And then finally, you have case four over here. When your population, you don't know the, um, the distribution. You don't know the variance, right? But what that means is that you'll be given a sample variance, right? Um, and uh, you're dealing with a large sample size, right? All right, so what we want to look at is we want to look at the critical regions and the test statistics for these different cases here, right? Um, all right, so for case one, what you have is you have a normal population, no invariance, and any sample size, right? All right, so what this table is doing for me, right, um, it's giving me the critical regions for your know, various cases, right, um, and for different alternative hypotheses, right? Okay, so for example, for case one, right, if your alternative hypothesis is mu bigger than mu zero, right, um, then uh, your critical region you see in over here, you want case one, and so a critical region for H1, mu bigger than mu zero, right, that critical region is, um, uh, the big Z is bigger than Z alpha, right? Okay, if uh, the alternative hypothesis for case one was mu less than mu zero, right, then you see in over here, in this column, it's case one over here, in which case this would be a critical region, right? And um, for case one, well, what would be the test statistic, right? This is the test statistic that you're going to use in um, case one over here, right? And as I said, case one means that you're looking at normal population, known variance, right, and any sample size. Okay, so case two now, right? Um, well, case two, the critical region is in fact the same, right? So case one, two, and case four, right? The form of the critical regions are all going to be the same, right? And is based on what the alternative hypothesis is, right? So for case two, right? Um, if your alternative hypothesis is mu bigger than mu zero, is mu bigger than mu zero, right? then uh, your critical region or your ejection region would be um, Z bigger than Z alpha, right? Okay. Right, so for cases one, two, and cases four, right, um, what you have is you have the same critical region, right, for uh, your corresponding alternative hypotheses, right? Okay, so let me consider, uh, compare um, case one and case four, right? Um, so for case one and case four, right? Um, cases one and cases four, right? The critical regions are the same, right? Um, for corresponding um, alternative hypotheses, you have the same critical regions, right? But comparing case one and case four, the test statistic is actually a little different, right? So the test statistic um, for case one, right, is this... Um, Z is equal to X bar minus mu on sigma root 10. Um, but the test statistic in a uh, case four, right, is it looks like basically the same thing, right? Except it's um, X bar minus mu, right, uh, on S on root 10, right? And why you're using an S over here is because for case four, right, it's um, unknown variance, right? So what you're given in your problem is you're given um, sample variance here, right? Um, versus case one over here where you have known variance, right? So in the case of when you have the known variance, the test is to stick um, right over here for, um, and then for all satisfying the other conditions in case one, you have a sigma over here and when you have um, a known variance, right, you're using the S over here, right? All right, so cases one and cases four in terms of formula are very similar, right? Um, the difference where you're going to have a probably a, a sort of larger difference in terms of how you work out the problem would be if you say compare case one over here and case three, right? Um, okay, so for case one, right, uh, this would be a form of um, your critical regions, right? But for case three, right, um, what you're dealing with is unknown variance and um, a small sample size, right? Um, normal population, unknown variance and small sample size. I don't want to remember in this sort of situation over here, your test statistic, right, which is this over here, right, is going to have a T distribution, right? Okay, so for case uh, three, right, um, you're using a T distribution, which means that the critical regions, right, uh, are going to, you're going to derive them based on uh, your T distribution, right? Um, but the structure is actually fairly similar, right? So if you're comparing to case one, right, if they, 
the alternative hypothesis um, for case one is um, mu bigger than mu zero, right? Um, then uh, for case three, right? Um, the alternative hypothesis, it has the same sort of structure over here, right? Um, this over here, this is again a critical value, but for t distribution, and this over here is a critical value for z distribution, right? Uh, and they have very similar meanings. Right, so you want to recall what a z critical value is. Z alpha means that is um, some value of a random variable z, right, over here. So it's a value, this z alpha over here, such that the probability that your random variable big z being bigger than this small z alpha over here, that probability is alpha over here, right? So in other words, the area to this right hand side on this. Um, right tail over here, that area over there is alpha. So that probability over there is equal to alpha. All right, okay, and the T alpha, right, um, T alpha nu, right, this is, this nu over here is degrees of freedom, right? It's the same idea, right? Um, so what you're looking at now is a T distribution, right? And previously, to talk about the Z alpha, what you're looking at was a Z distribution, right? And you want to bear in mind that um, a T distribution, a Z distribution, they have similar characteristics, right? Um, both of them are bell shape uh, with mean zero, right? Um, okay, anyway, so your T alpha, right, for a certain degree of freedom, right? So you have a T distribution with some particular degree of freedom, right? Um, and the, the T alpha in that case is a value of your T distribution, right? Um, so the small T alpha over here is a value of a uh, the, the big T here, right? Um, such that the probability that um, the big T is bigger than this uh, T alpha, that probability is equal to alpha over here, right? So your shaded region on this right tail over here, this probability is equal to alpha, right? Which is the same concept uh, that what you had for Z alpha, right? So really the idea for the Z alpha and the idea for the T alpha is the same sort of idea, right? It's almost as if you just had a different name for it, right? Of course, you're gonna have different values, right? Um, so for alpha over here, the, the T value, right? Um, for a fixed alpha, for example, if say alpha was say like 0 0.05, right? Um, then the T value and the Z value, okay? So the T uh, 0 0.05 and the Z 0 0.05 would be slightly different values, right? They would be actually somewhat close, right? But it won't be the same values, okay? Right, so you wanna bear in mind that the Z alpha and the T alpha really are just uh, similar concepts. All right, so if we looking at this case three over here where we have a normal population with um, a known variance and a um, small sample size, right? Well, yeah. when we're looking at single means over here, this is your Null hypothesis is basically just going to take this form, right? Mu is equal to a constant mu zero, right? And um, your alternative is based on what the problem is, right? So, for example, if you were talking about this case three over here and the alternative was mu bigger than mu zero, right? Um, then your critical region would look like this over here, right? It would be a t bigger than uh, bigger than a t alpha over here, right? Um, and the critical region would in fact be this values bigger than your T alpha over here, right? So it'd be from here and then values along your number line over here that are bigger than that um, T alpha V, right? Okay, so the critical region is not the, um, the shaded area over here, right? That's actually the probability. The critical region is the, um, the, the line interval over here that's starting at uh, the T alpha over here, right? So that would be um, the form of critical region in the case of H1, right? Um, and in the case of when the H1 is mu bigger than mu zero, right? If the H1 is mu less than mu zero, right? Um, then your critical region would be um, the big T minus T alpha, right? Which would in fact, so this is the minus T alpha over here. So your critical region would be values of T um, that uh, today I'm the left of that uh, minus T alpha over here, right? So this interval over here, right? All right, so let's consider this hypothesis test and problem here, right? Um, okay, we're looking at glycerol concentration in white wine, right? Um, 
first thing we'd probably want to do with the question is to figure out which one of these and okay so it's glycerol concentration of white wine right um and what we concerned about is um average glycerol concentration of, uh, right in white wine right Okay, so we're concerned about population mean, right? Um, okay, so we want to investigate population mean, right? And what we have is you have a single population here, right? Okay, so we in this setup over here, we're going to use one of these four cases, right? Um, and your null hypothesis is going to take um, this form here, right? Um, H0, your null is equal to mu is equal to constant, right? Now, what you want to do is you want to determine, well, which one of your four cases you're looking at here, right? Um, and well, let's see what information is given to me, right? Um, uh, we know that um, the the population is normally distributed, right? Um, okay, your sample size is small, right? This is a sample size of size five, right? Which is less than uh, the, the cutoff, which is usually 30 over here. So 30 is regarded, anything bigger than equal to 30 is regarded as large. And if we have five, five is less than 30, so that's considered small, right? Okay, so we have normal population, um, small uh, sample size, and notice what you're given over here is sample standard deviation, right? Okay, so you're given sample standard deviation, and what that uh, means for us is that um, the, the variance is unknown, right? Um, and you're estimating over here, right? Um, okay, so you have unknown variance. So what you are, you're looking at case three now, right? All right, okay, and uh, once we decided that, well, okay, we're in case three, right? Um, well, probably the next thing you'd want to do is you want to figure out what the, the null and the alternative hypotheses are, right? Um, okay, so what are you looking at, right? They, they tell you that, um, Average concentration is conjectured to be four, right? And um, you do an experiment and you with five uh, wines, right? And you get your sample average is, okay, so you get your sample average to be 3.814, right? Um, right so, so far, what we have is we have that the H0 is uh, mu is equal to four, right? Um, Okay, so that is the conjectured mean over here, right? And well, what's the question asking me to do, right? Um, uh, okay, so what the question is asking me to do will uh, determine what the H1 is going to be, right? Um, now, you want to notice here is, does the given sample data support uh, the conjecture, the above conjecture? And the above conjecture is basically that the H0 is... Um, mu is equal to four, right? So does this 3.814, does it support um, mu is equal to four, right? Now, what you wanna notice over here is they're not asking you to check to see if the concentration is less than four or if the concentration is bigger than uh, four, right? Um, they're asking you to check to see if um, this over here supports uh, mu is equal to four, right? So, okay, so you're not, um, uh, being asked to check to see if um question is not asking you if the the average mean if it's less than four if it's bigger than four right um your h zero is mu is equal to four right and it want you to check to see if um that statement if it is true or if it is not true right um and if it's not true right literally if it's not true well if you have mu is equal to four and you want to negate the statement, then uh, the negation of mu is equal to four is mu not equal to four, right? So for this sort of setup over here, right? Um, when you're not asked for to investigate if it's less than or um, if it's bigger than, then um, your alternative hypothesis is going to be um, uh, not equal to over here, right? So in this case, the H1 is mu not equal to four, right? All right, okay, so we know what the, um, the form of my uh, H1 is going to be. The form of my alternative hypothesis is going to be um, mu not equal to mu zero, right? So this is a type over here. This should be mu not equal to mu zero, right? And um, uh, right, so the case that we're looking at is case three, right? Because what we have is we have a small sample size, right? Um, we have a known standard deviation, right? 
uh, we have a normal population. So that's um, case three over here, right? So if you're in case uh, three, right, um, and you look at another alternative hypothesis, which is mu not equal to mu zero. So again, there's a typo there. It should be mu not equal to mu zero. Then this would be the form of uh, your critical region, right? So your critical region would consist of uh, two intervals, right? One on the left tail over here, and then one on the right tail here, right? Okay, and what would be the test? This is the stick that we're going to use, right? So in case three, right? Um, with uh, a known variant, small sample size, a normal population. In case three, your test statistic is um, this uh, t uh, is coming from your t distribution, right? So it's going to be x bar minus mu on uh, the s on root 10, right? Okay, so this is the test statistic. Uh, what we would need is we'd need an observed value of the test statistic, right? So this is the test statistic that we would use. Right, so we're using this test statistic over here. Uh, we need an observed value for the test statistic, right? And that's not hard to do, right? All you need to do is just really feed in um, your information from the problem, right? Um, okay, so the observed value of the x bar is 3.814, right? Um, okay, so you do your random sample here, and you, uh, the average that you get is 3.814, right? Uh, so that's the small x bar here, right? Um, the observed standard deviation, the sample standard deviation is 0.718, right? So that's what you're going to put inside there. Your sample size is 5, so you're going to have root 5 over here. And the mu that you're going to use is the mu comes from the 8, 0, right? Um, this is your test in this hypothesis. So you're assuming that the mu is equal to 4, and you want to check to see if that's a valid uh, uh, hypothesis or not, right? But um, to work out this problem, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be assuming that the, uh, the mu is equal to 4, right? So this value over here, the mu comes from the 8, 0, right? Okay, so once you put in those things, what you will get is the small x bar is 3.814, right? The mu is equal to 4. The s, the sample standard deviation is 0.718, and you have root 5. So this over here, when you work that out, you get this value for your, your test statistic, right? All right, and as I said, right, um, if we, in this case three over here, with normal population, unknown variance, and small sample size, and we're looking at uh, H1, which is mu not equal to mu zero, so in this case, the mu is not equal to four, all right? This would be the form of uh, the critical region, your rejection region, right? So it would be um, uh, consists of two intervals over here, one on your left tail and one on your right tail, right? What we need to do is we need to actually figure out what these critical values are, right? Um, so we know the form of the critical region, but we actually need your critical values here, right? Okay, so we want the T critical values, um, and your T critical values depend on what your level of significance is going to is what is your level of significance, right? Um, okay, so for a level of significance that is alpha here, right? Um, and then for the conditions in our problem, the uh, your critical values, your T critical values would be T alpha on two, right? Uh, N minus one, right? Where N is the, um, the sample size, right? Okay, so the alpha in for this problem is the alpha is level of significance is uh, 5%, right? Or 0 0.05, right? And what I have over here is um, T alpha on two, right? So 0 0.05, right, which is the alpha divided by two would be uh, 0 0.025, right? Okay, so the alpha on two is equal to 0 0.025, right? And what you'd need is the n minus one, but the n is just simply the sample size, right? The n is equal to five. Okay, so your sample size is five minus one, which is four, right? Okay, so what we're looking for is T critical value, um, T alpha on two, uh, with N minus one degrees of freedom, where the alpha on two is 0 0.025, and the degrees of freedom, the N minus one is equal to four, right? Okay, so we need to get uh, this T critical value, right? T 
uh, 0 0.025, right, um, per degrees of freedom are four, okay? Okay, so we realize that um, what we want is this T critical value, T um, 0 0.025 um, per degrees of freedom four, right? So the 0 0.025 means that the probability to your right hand side of a T critical value is, uh, that probability is 0 0.025, right? Okay, so what getting this here really isn't hard. You're just going to get it straight out of the table, right? So we're looking for T.025, and literally you're seeing the T.025 over there, right? When you want it for degrees of freedom, 4 here, right? So T.025 for degrees of freedom, 4 is 2.776, right? So that's how I get this, right? The 2.776, right? And notice over here, the form of your rejection region, right? When you have uh, not equal to like this, right? It's, uh, as I said, it's um, two-sided um, rejection region, two-sided critical region. So one is T.0254, right? Um, that's this critical value over here. And on this side is just minus of the um, T.0254, right? So you don't need to do any extra work. You already found the T.0254, which is 2.776. So all you do is you negate that, right? So you have minus 2.776, right? Okay, so this is, um, you see in over here, the two intervals uh, in red, right? One on the right-hand side and one on the left tail over here. This is um, your critical region and your rejection region, right? And now your final step is, we already computed the test statistic, which is 0.58, all right? Minus 0.58. And you want to notice that your test statistic um, uh, is not lying in um, your rejection region, right? So if you're looking at it over here, this is minus 2 point, basically minus 2.8. And here this is 2.8, right? And if I have a minus 0.58, the minus 0.58 would be, well, it would be to the left to the zero, right? But it wouldn't be so far that it would end up lying in this uh, uh rejection region over here, right? So your test statistic does not lie in um, your rejection region, right? And what that tells you is that um, you uh, you cannot reject H0, right? Um, so in other words, uh, well, our next informal way to look at this is that um, this over here, it does not support H1, right? So it doesn't support H1. Matter of fact, it um, supports H0, right? And how you're going to state that is you cannot reject H0, right? Um, so what the evidence is saying is the evidence is this here, right? Um, this 3.814, right? In fact, supports the conjecture that um, the, uh, the mean uh, glycerol concentration of white wines is in fact 4. All right, so what we want to do now is use hypothesis testing to compare means from different populations, right? Okay, so let's use this example here, right? Um, we have Norwegians, right? Um, and then you have all the heights of Norwegians, right? So that's a population uh, of heights, right? Okay, and that population, we assume it's normally distributed with a mean mu1, right? And a variance sigma1 squared, right? Okay, and then we have a second population, which is a similar um, population, but not the same, not, not an identical population, right? So again, we're looking at heights now, right? Um, we're heights of Trinidadians, right? Okay. Now, this population um, has an average, right? A mean, which is going to be different from the population for the heights of the Norwegians, right? So while for the heights of Norwegians, we had an, a mean of mu1, right? For the heights of the Trinidadians, the mean is now mu2, right? And similarly, um, for Norwegians, the standard, um, the variance was sigma1 squared, and for for the Trinidadians, audience, there's no reason to expect the variance to be the same, right? So what you do is you use sigma 2 squared to denote the variance uh, of the, the heights of uh, the Trinidadians. audience, okay? Right, so with the hypothesis testing, what we want to do is we want to compare the average heights, right? So we want to compare the mu1 and the mu2, right? 
All right, so we want to compare the average heights for the Norwegians and the Canadians, right? Okay, and let's say um, we want to compare, uh, we think that the heights of the Norwegians, it's the average height of the Norwegians is actually um, more than the average heights of the Canadians, right? So if, uh, if you want to use hypothesis testing to, to test that, right? Um, well, your in that case, your alternative hypothesis, um, you want to check to see if the mu1 is bigger than mu2, right? So remember, mu1 is the average height of the Norwegians, and mu2 is the average height of the Canadians, right? So this is our h1 over here, and then given the h1, we can form the h0, right? Um, to form the h0 from the h1, you just take this uh, inequality over here and replace the inequality sign by equal sign, right? Okay, so this would be the hypotheses that we'll be using in this case to compare the the means right from the different populations right okay now with this here right um what you want to do is it's probably easier in terms of working out the statistics to write the mu1 equal to mu2 as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero right and to write the mu1 bigger than mu2 as mu1 minus mu2 bigger than 0, right? So you want to notice this is really more or less a rephrasing because it's the same thing, right? Mu1 is equal to mu2 is um, exactly the same as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0, right? Um, okay, as I said, why you'd want to do this over here, why you'd want to rearrange it like this over here is because it's more convenient for when you um calculating your observed test statistics, right? Okay, so let's see some um, uh, experimental results, right? Um, see, so from for some different um, experiments. So let's uh, say that uh, we measured the Norwegians and we got uh, an observed a sample mean height of uh, uh, x1 bar, right, which is 68.2, right? So this... Um, x1 bar to 68.2 is an observed um, uh, observed sample mean, right? Okay, so this um, x1 bar, right, is sample mean, right? Um, okay, and then you, again, you, what you do is for the Trinidadians, you find several Trinidadians, you take the average height, and in this case, what we got is the sample mean over here was 68, right? So for the Norwegians, we got um, 68.2, right? For the Trinidadians, we got 68, right? And now what we do is we consider the difference of these um, sample means, right? So the difference, the x1 bar minus the x2 bar is 68.2 minus uh, 68, which is 0 0.2, right? Now the 0 0.2, right, um, without, and this is an informal example, so without using, say, like standard deviations, and so the 0 0.2, we can say, just roughly is that the 0 0.2 is not significantly larger than 0, right? So we get uh, 0 0.2, the 0 0.2 is not significantly larger than 0. And therefore, in this case, we can't um, reject 8, 0, right? Um, okay, so we can't reject 8, 0, and therefore what we conclude is, in this case, that um, the evidence um, supports that the mean height of a uh, the Norwegians is the same as the Trinidadians, okay? Right. Right, so let's say we had a different um, experimental result where the observed mean height of the Norwegians, the X1 bar was 74, right? And the observed mean height of the Trinidadians is 68, right? Now, in this case, the difference of the sample means the X1 bar minus the X2 bar, right? Um, is 74 minus 68, which is 4, right? Now, this x1 bar minus x2 bar is now significantly larger than 0, right? Okay, so what that is telling you, right, is that um, it's telling you, well, in this case, what I should do is we should reject h0 in favor of h1, right? Now, in both of these cases, in order to make everything more precise, right, what you'd need is some sort of tolerance that, um, well, or more precisely, you'd need a critical or rejection region that is formed from your standard deviations, right? But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just introducing the material. So this is really just to give you an idea how you compare in the, um, 
the population means, right? Um, use an observed um, sample means, right? All right, okay, and your third case over here, right? Um, what we got is we got an observed mean height x1 bar for the Norwegian is a 70, and the observed um, uh, mean height for the Trinidadians is 68, right? Okay, so the difference now is 70 minus uh, 68, which is 2, right? And that's bigger than 0, right? Um, the question is if it's significantly larger than uh, the 0 or not, right? So over here, for case 2, you had 4, which we could probably say was significantly larger than 0. But in this case here, the 2, well, is it significantly larger or not, right? And so it's probably a little unclear over here whether you should reject the 8, 0 or not, right? Um, okay, um, and in this case here, right, um, what you'd need to do is you'd need to use your standard deviations and your level of significance to come up with a critical region, right? And then from that, you could use the hypothesis testing, right? Um, to decide whether you're going to reject H0 or not reject H0. Right, okay, so a method of um, hypothesis testing for uh, comparing two means, right? It's a similar method to what we were doing for um, uh, single mean, right? It is slightly more complicated, but not uh, that much, not significantly uh, more complicated, right? Okay, so uh, similar to what would happen with um, the single mean cases, what could happen in here is that the populations, um, you could know the distributions or you do not know the distributions, you know the variances or you do not know the variances and the sample size could be large or small, right? But actually it's a little easier in, um, for us in um, uh, for the difference of means because what we will do in this class is we're only going to consider cases one and two over here, all right? Um, so for cases one and two, right, um, what you're dealing with is um, large sample sizes, right? So the sample size from each population um, is both of those are bigger than 30, right? Um, uh, you uh, it's unknown um, distributions, so you don't um, know. Uh, this will work whether the population is normal or, or not, right? And well, the only difference between case one and case two over here is for case one, you know the variance, and for case two, you do not know the variance. But even when you don't know the variance, um, what you will have is you'd have a sample um, variance that would be provided for you, right? Okay, so. We're looking at, um, we want to compare um, population means from two different populations, right? So we're looking at, you know, in this class, we're going to consider cases one and two, right? Um, both cases, um, it's unknown distributions, large sample sizes. The difference between case one and case two is case one, you know the variance, and case two, you don't know the variance, right? Okay, so that is... Um, conditions, right, for using our formula, right? Um, and now, well, what's the form of our hypotheses, right? Right, so null is usually, is for us, would always be stated as um, using a equal sign, right? Okay, so if you consider the example that we had when we were comparing the mean heights of uh, the Norwegians and the Trinidadians, the H1 in that case was mu1 bigger than mu2, right? But I said that um, uh, it's more convenient, um, well, basically to bring everything across on your left-hand side, right? So this mu1 equal to mu2, I write as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. And the mu1 bigger than mu2, I write as mu1 minus mu2 um, uh, bigger than zero, right? Right, so you want to notice for this example here, right, uh, the H0 is you're using an equality sign in your H0, right, and how it's stated, uh, it's stated as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to a value, and in this case the value is 0, right. Um, right. A little more generally, um, how are we going to state the null hypothesis in, um, when we compare in, um two means is you're going to have mu1 minus mu2 is equal to a constant, right? And the constant we call d0, right? In this case over here, the d0 is equal to zero, right? In this case over here, 
the D zero. Well, this is a general um reason for the for the H zero over here. Right, the D zero could be anything. Right. Okay, so this is what your null hypothesis is going to look like, right? Um, when you compare in um, means from different populations. Okay, and as I said, what we're doing is we just consider in um, case one and case two over here, right? So this is what the H zero looks like, and this is these are the different possibilities for the H one, right? Either the um this quantity over here, mu one minus mu two, either it's bigger than d zero, right? Either it's uh less than d zero or um the mu one minus mu two is not equal to the d zero, right? Um okay, so for example uh over here what I have is the H one is mu one minus mu two is bigger than zero, right? So that actually falls into this case over here. Here the D zero, right? Uh, this constant over here. And the D you could think of as difference, right? Um the D zero over here, this is equal to zero, right? Um so this here, what you're looking at is you're looking at this form of uh your alternative hypothesis H one, right? Um and uh in that case for cases one and two, right? Um, if this is your H1 here, right? Then your critical region would take this form, Z bigger than Z alpha, right? Um, and this really is the same form with critical region that we used when we were looking at, um, uh, looking at hypothesis testing on um, single means, right? Okay, now if the H1 is mu1 minus mu2 is less than D0, right, then this would be the form of your critical region. And if you have mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to D0, then you're going to have your, um, your two-sided um, critical region over here, right? Okay, so this is for cases 1 and 2, which is what we're going to consider. We're not considering cases 3 and 4 um, in this class here, right? Okay, so once you have that, right, um, well, you know what the critical region is, but remember, similar to what we saw in a single mean case, you need a critical region, and then you also need a test statistic, right? Okay, so in case one, this is the form of your test statistic. So in case one, this is the form of the test statistic. Um, the test statistic is the uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2. Right on the square root of uh, sigma one squared on n one plus sigma two squared on n two. Right. Okay. Right. So this is the test statistic that we would use um, for case one, and then for case two, this is the test statistic that we would use. Right. And what I know, this is really basically the same thing. Right. Um, the only difference is for case one, you know the variance. So what you have is sigma one squared over here, and sigma two squared. Right. And in this case two over here, you don't know the variance. So what you do is you use the S1 over here as a proxy for the sigma one and you use the S2 over here as a proxy for the sigma two. All right, so let's consider this uh, hypothesis test in question where what we're doing is we compare an, um, two population means, right? Okay, so we have um, citrus trees, right? Um, two varieties of citrus trees, right? So variety one, um, uh, what we're doing is we're looking at the height of um, uh, variety one, right? So what we do is we measure the height of um, 40 um, mature citrus trees of variety one, right? All we get is we get an observed um, uh, average height of the X1 bar is 13.8, right? And you have uh, an observed um, standard deviation of 1.2 feet, right? Okay, now in variety two, right, um, you have, um, again, the sample size is 40, right? And the observed average, right, is 12.9 in the case of variety two, with um, observed standard deviation of 1.5, right? Okay, so, Right, so which one are we in, right? Are we using case one or case two over here, right? Um, the sample sizes are large over here, and um, uh, for variety one, the sample size is 40, right? So the N1 is 40, which is bigger than 30. 
and for variety 2 right your sample size is large um, that is also 40 as well right okay so we have large sample sizes right um, they didn't specify any question as to whether the populations are normally distributed or not but you don't really need it for cases 1 and cases 2 yeah. okay how you decide between case 1 and case 2 is the fact over here they use an S1 here right and if it's S1 over here it means that um, you don't know the variance right and what you're doing is you actually um, estimating it over here right um, okay so this is uh, estimated um, uh, standard deviation here right so uh, therefore what we're looking at is case 2 here right we don't know the variance right and the well it's in fact given to us the sample um, uh, variance which is s1 squared right is given to us right Okay, so we're going to be using a uh, formula over here for case two, right? All right, so let's organize the information for the problem, right? Um, uh, what do we know, right? Um, what we know is we know for variety one, we know uh, the observed average uh, height is 13.8, right? We know the um, observed uh, standard deviation is S1, which is 1.2, right? And the sample size, N1, is 40, right? Okay, and similarly, for variety 2, right, uh, your observed uh, average height is 12.9. Um, the observed standard deviation is 1.5. And your sample size over here is, again, 40, right? Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, when you're comparing uh, means from two different populations, this would be a form of a null hypothesis, right? Mu1 minus mu2 is equal to uh, some constant over here, right? Um, okay, and in a particular case, if um, the d0 over here is equal to 0, right? Then what you're doing is you're looking at uh, mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0, right? In other words, you're looking at a null hypothesis of mu1 is equal to mu2, right? Okay, so what are they asking us for in um, this problem, right? What they want you to do is you want to investigate if there's a difference in the mean heights, right? Um, okay, so you're not asked to investigate if the difference in the mean heights, if it is, say, um, larger than 5, or if the difference in the mean heights is less than, uh, say, 2 or something like that. What you're looking at is you're just simply looking at the difference of the mean heights, right? And you want to determine if uh, there's a difference in that those mean heights, right? Okay, so because there's no sort of offset or anything um, implied in this question, right? What's happening over here is the D0 is going to be equal to 0, right? So, and, um, so using what we looked at before, right? Um, what we really investigating in this problem is we investigating um, a null hypothesis of this form uh, mu1 equal to mu2, right? Um, but how we want to phrase it in our problem because of the setup as we want to phrase it as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero, right? So the form of my null hypothesis uh, for this problem, seeing that what I'm looking at is really differences. I want to check to see if there's a difference or not. And there's no sort of offset or anything like that. The null would look like this. Um, H0 is equal to uh, mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. Okay, so a null hypothesis um, is mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. And what are you asking me to, um, to investigate, right? What's the theory to be questioned, uh, to be determined or a question to be answered, right? What we're looking for is we want to check to see if there's actually a difference or not in the mean heights, right? So question is not asking us to say, to check to see if uh, the height for variety one is bigger than variety two, right? Or less than or so on, right? What we checking for is we checking for if there's a difference, right? And if it's a difference, right, um, uh, in the heights, right, in the average heights, right? Well, then what the H1 is going to take this form, mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to zero, right? Okay, so as I said, um, to repeat a little bit, uh, what we have is we're looking for, we're investigating difference in heights, right? Okay, so we're not investigating if uh, one is less than the next one, 
or one is greater than the next one, right? What we check in for is difference, right? And if we just check in for difference, we use uh, not equal to over here, right? So this is the form of my H1 over here, right? Okay, so as I said for this problem, uh, what we have is we have um, unknown distributions, unknown variance, and uh, we have a large sample size, right? Okay, so for this case two, so we're looking at case two, and well, what's the test statistic um, for case two, right? The test statistic for case two according for our formula is this over here, right? So it's x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2. Uh, square root of s1 squared on n1, right, uh, plus s2 squared on n2, right? Okay, so this is the test statistic that we'll be using, right? Um, and we need to calculate the value of that test statistic um, for our problem. But the, in, uh, the information is all just given to us, right? So all we're just doing is just really substituting these values into uh, the test statistic, right? So that's done over here in the solution, right? This is the test statistic, the observed test statistic, right? And you just feed in your values, right? So you feed in the x1 bar and the x2 bar. You feed in the mu1 and mu2, right? Um, okay, so what's mu1? Well, strictly speaking, you feed in the difference of uh, the mu1 and mu2, right? But uh, remember, by um, hypothesis, right, the h0 is saying that the mu1 minus mu2 is in fact equal to zero, so you put that in over there, right? So the mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. And then you put in the values for the small s1 and the small s2, right? So that's what we get over here, and then you just calculate what this test statistic is, right? And that's um, 2.963, right? Okay, so that's working out the test statistic, right? Now the next thing that we would need is we would need your critical region, right? So again, just recall we in case two over here, right? Right. In case two, right? Uh, we're looking at um, uh, alternative hypothesis of um, H one that is of this form: mu one minus mu two is not equal to a constant. In this case, the constant d zero is just equal to zero. So we're looking at the H one uh, that is mu one minus mu two not equal to zero. So we're in this case over here. And the critical region would be of this form, right? Um, it would be, uh, it consists of two tails, right? Uh, Z less than uh, minus Z alpha together with Z bigger than Z alpha, right? Okay, so, well, in order to get these Z alphas over here, right? Um, what you would need is, you'd need the level of significance, right? So what is the alpha in the problem, right? Um, the alpha in the problem is, right, the alpha in the problem is 0 0.05, right? Okay, so if the alpha is 0 0.05, right, um, the alpha on two is um, 0 0.025, right? So what you're looking for is Z critical values, um, uh, for when the alpha on 2 is equal to um, uh, 0.025, okay? Right, so we need to get those values and you can get that value from, um, in fact, you can get the value from your t-table, right? Because I think, as I mentioned, if you have an infinite number of degrees of freedom, right, um, then that's really the same as having a standard normal, right? Okay, so we want uh, a z critical value for um, 0 0.025, right? And for 0 0.025, the z critical value is 1.96, right? Okay, so a critical region is of this form with um, a left tail over here and a right tail, and we figured out what the z critical value is, right? So the alpha is 0 0.05, right? So the alpha on 2 is 0 0.025, right? And the z critical value for 0 0.025, right? So for 0 0.025 over here, the z critical value is 1.96, right? Okay, right? So what I have over here is I have z bigger than or equal to 1.96, and then z less than or equal to minus 1.96, which is the critical region specified over here, right? Okay, so we worked out the test statistic. We worked out the critical region, right? Uh, and 
And then what you do is you check to see if the test is a stick, um, if it lies in a critical region, right? So you can graph and so on, right? And the solution it didn't graph, right? And you don't really need to, right? Um, what you have is you have a test stick, which is 2.963, right? And does it satisfy one of these criteria over here, right? Is this 2.963, is it bigger than 1.96? Yes, it is, right? So that means that uh, the 2.963 over here is lying in this critical region, more specifically, it's lying in the right tail over here, right, uh, specified by the Z bigger than 1.96. Okay, and because this test stick is in the critical region, what you're going to do is you're going to reject 80, right? And rejecting 80, right, means that um, you, the evidence support H1, right? And so therefore you conclude that there is a difference in uh, the mean heights uh, between the two varieties.